Okay, so now let us go to sagemath.org and um, download the right um, sage math um, for your system. So let's go to downloads and go here. So let's say we're working on Mac OS X. Then let's go to Germany and let us uh, choose which system we want. So for this, you have to go to about this Mac and I look around and I see, okay, I have an Intel processor, so I need the Intel, not the PowerPC subdirectory. Grab Intel. And then now I have many other options. I have .dmg, uh, some image or app.dmg. So we would like to get the full Sage distribution for traditional Unix command line, command line like use. So that's the easiest way to do it. An alternative is to download the tar.bz2, um, which uh, we will maybe do in the next video. But for now, let's just download this guy, okay? So if you download it, he's gonna sort of come down. You can put it just in your downloads folder, for example, and uh, hit save. And uh, you have to wait for a while, okay? But I've already downloaded it, so it's here. Um, in my download folders, took a, a fair bit of time, so it's right here. So now I'm simply going to double click it and see what it happens. So it's opening the DMG um, image, and let's give it a little bit of time. We have just put Sage Math in applications. So now if you do ls applications Sage Math um, is here. And the way we're going to call this program is by simply saying applications Sage Math Sage. Okay. So if we do this, we can get Sage running on just command line. This is quite useful. You don't really need the GUI. You can do a lot of beautiful things here directly. Um, so let's exit out of there. So instead of calling, um, so make sure you're in the right directory. So now you're in the home directory. And if you look at AS, which is where we put all our stuff, so we know our files are here and it has all the data files and all the images so we're good to go right so now let us um, do a nice little shortcut instead of doing get rid of the hash so this is called creating a soft link uh, ln is for link sudos to have root access so now we're going to create a soft link from where the Sage executable is, which is in the applications folder, to some other place um, we would like it to be. So that uh, we can just call Sage. Okay, so let's see if this works. So you have to put your user password. This works, this is great. So now the beauty is I can just say Sage like that, right? This is much nicer than doing it this way. Okay, it's just the same. So if I do sage, I can start the command line again. All beautiful. Let's check one plus two this time. Yep, let's exit. And now if I want to run a notebook server, what do I do? I have to um, type in sage dash n and also let's make sure i'm at a directory where i can see my my 
files. Yes, I can. So I do sage dash n j u p y p e r. That's sage notebook Jupyter. So this is now launching off my default browser, which is Firefox for me, and setting up everything, and it's just good to go. Okay. So if you go back to the thing, sometimes you may have to put this whole URL with this access token, uh, especially for the first time. Copy paste this URL into your browser when you connect for the first time to log in with the token. Okay, so sometimes you have to just copy paste the whole thing into the browser. No biggie. So that's it. We are now able to browse everything. So let's go to AS for Applied Stats. This is where all our content is. Let's just sort of briefly run through all the notebooks just to make sure everything works. There's nothing funny going on. So this is going to take a little bit of time where matplotlib builds its cache. That's pretty fast. And Let's make sure, yep, we can fetch data from NOAA and do linear regression, and I think everything is going to work beautifully, no worries. Okay, so now let's just make sure a few other things also work. Uh, let's get into this notebook. Let's see the URL. Yes, we can reach internet and come out. All of these things are great. And let's just make sure everything works fine okay so i want to make sure man pages work yes very good and boom 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 so everything seems okay okay good so i'm pretty happy so much for that. So now, when you're done, what do you do to shut down? Well, there's several ways. You can um, make sure you save your notebook. So if you make any changes to your notebook, then uh, make sure that uh, edit stuff, blah, blah, blah. So then uh, save it. Uh, it automatically checkpoints and saves for you as well. Then you can just um, download as, say, IPYNB notebook, and you can save it to some location you want. I ignore this internal server error warning. Um, I'm just going to you know, just save it somewhere. Okay, so let's make sure that 00.IPYNB was just saved to downloads. Yes, and this is just a text file. Uh, and if you look at it, um, I, this stuff is actually there. So IPython notebook is just a big text file, JSON file. Okay, so all good to go. So this notebook server is running. So this terminal is how you control your notebook server. So if you can do one of two things, if you want to get out of this, you can just say log out, for example. So this will just log you out of the um, out of the server. Um, you can just close things that you don't want. Um, you can also just quit, right? So this is one way. Uh, stop the Jupyter server. So you can just quit, and then you will you're back here. So the other way is you can just go here and do control C. So it says shut down this notebook server, say yes. This is the foolproof way of quitting it. Just control C. Okay. Okay, so, so all the steps so far. 